Lords and ladies, the proverbial genie is out of the bottle, and we now know definitively that we will not be getting any new content for Baldur's Gate 3 in the form of DLC or expansions. And let me be honest at the outset. I am incredibly, deeply disappointed. I had sincerely hoped for some kind of expansion, or at least some extra races or class or two added to the game. Furthermore, we also know that Larian will not be working on anything Dungeons and Dragons related for the foreseeable future, and likely ever to be honest. And this is where we must delve into the reason as to why. It truly begs the question, as Baldur's Gate 3 was wildly successful, far beyond the expectations of Larian, their competitors in the market at the time, gamers, and just about everyone on planet Earth. Having covered Baldur's Gate 3 since early access, I find this a question that simply must be answered. Of course, we cannot know 100% what's going on behind closed doors, and thus we must rely on a fair bit of putting the puzzle pieces together. But despite not having absolute certainty, I think we can determine with very high probability why Larian is completely done with BG3, and I think perhaps more importantly, Dungeons & Dragons as a franchise, as well as some potential silver linings towards the end. Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. Now I'm not claiming that these guys are the only reason, because Sven Finke himself has cited other reasons, and indeed, in a recent Twitter post, Sven stated that their decision to pull away from D&D has nothing to do with Wizards of the Coast, but here, we really need to read between the lines. I am proposing that there are three primary reasons in total. Hasbro, rule setting compatibility, and finally, a genuine lack of desire on the part of Larian, which partly depends on the former two. So let's start with the elephant in the room, the abomination otherwise known as Hasbro. Now when you think of Hasbro, most people think of them as a toy manufacturer, and a few things come to mind in terms of products. You might think of Transformers, Play-Doh, Monopoly, G.I. Joe, and Power Rangers, among others. But you would not necessarily think Dungeons and & Dragons, and yet, Hasbro does in fact own Wizards of the Coast, which they purchased 25 years ago, in 1999. Now it's important to understand why Hasbro bought Wizards of the Coast in the first place, because it directly ties into some of the events that occurred in recent days and weeks. Hasbro did not buy Wizards of the Coast because of Dungeons and Dragons. Rather, they bought it at the time because of the card game Magic the Gathering, which Wizards of the Coast was making bank on. D&D was never particularly lucrative, and Hasbro probably viewed the tabletop RPG more as a liability than anything else, something that's reflected in Hasbro's treatment of the D&D division of Wizards of the Coast over the last few months. And this is important to realize, as it helps us understand the current situation. Now, D&D itself, as previously stated, was never a big moneymaker, and had always been relegated to the realm of niche entertainment and hobbies. And this status had persisted since its inception, till something happened in the year 2015, which, you might guess, was Critical Role. Now, D&D 5th Edition had come out in just the previous year, and Critical Role was decisive in popularizing both D&D and 5th Edition rules, bringing interest in it to a far wider audience than had been previously possible. So here we have the situation. D&D is getting more popular, for the first time, and it seems to be bringing in more cash than ever, via the attention economy. And sometime later, in this context, Sven Finke makes a successful sales pitch proposal to Wizards of the Coast to make a Baldur's Gate 3 game after several repeated attempts over the years, and they are finally on board. One has to imagine the atmosphere at both Larian and Wizards of the Coast at this time as being particularly positive and energizing. The early appearances of Sven Finke in his full armor with his magic potions are a testament to this, and all the evidence we have suggests that he had an excellent working relationship with specific individuals at Wizards of the Coast, and that blossoms into a game that we've all come to appreciate called Baldur's Gate 3. In the beginning, you could see the marked enthusiasm and passion that Sven Finke brought to the table and emanated to the world. This was a guy who was full in on this project, and indeed, in earlier interviews, Sven had stated that he had always wanted to make a D&D game, and then he ended up making one. So what happened? Well, in a few words, the industry happened. One could say, and more specifically, Hasbro happened, or in a single word, greed. Sometime last year, Wizards of the Coast, almost certainly at the behest of higher-ups, i.e. Hasbro, made an announcement that they were going to change their OGL. The OGL stands for Open Gaming License, and it stipulates that the D&D rules, mechanics, and systems can be modified, copied, and ultimately used freely by other tabletop systems. This license was created over 20 years ago and was meant to be 
ironclad and applicable for all time until Wizards of the Coast at the behest of Hasbro decided things needed to be different. Though technically qualified as rumors by Wizards of the Coast, they sought to make people who had created their own tabletop games in concert with the OGL derivative systems pay royalties to Wizards of the Coast by making amendments to the open gaming license. Now at the time, the uproar and reaction to this was considerable, and ultimately, these amendments proved to be so unpopular that Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast Corpos were forced to give up these plans, and the OGL has, to the best of my knowledge, returned to the status quo. I mention this just to give some insight into just what sort of company Hasbro is, and by extension, the corporate division of Wizards of the Coast. And more recently, Wizards of the Coast borked it yet again by condemning the use of AI art and banning it, all the while using AI art themselves for certain products. You can see the hypocrisy. Then last year, in addition to 9,000 plus developer layoffs in the games industry, Hasbro laid off a whopping 1,100 people, primarily from Wizards of the Coast, and very specifically from the Art and Dungeons and Dragons staff, the very people that Sven Finke had worked so closely with for several years. And by his own words, virtually everyone he had worked with is now gone from Wizards of the Coast. And in case you've not yet checked out Sven Finke's speeches at the Game Development Awards, then it's high time that you do so now because everything you'll hear is a consequence and a reflection of the history that I've just described. All the games will always have a heart, a uh, warm spot in our hearts. We'll forever be proud of it, but we're not going to continue it. We're not going to make new expansions, which everybody's expecting us to do. We're not going to make Baldur's Gate 4, which everybody's expecting us to do. We're going to move on. We're going to move away from D&D, &D, and we're going to start making a new thing. Uh, I'm saying it here because I'm a forum, and we get bombarded by people that uh, expect us to do these things, but that's not for us. It's going to be up to the Wizards of the Coast because it's their idea to find someone to take over the torch who think we did our job. Uh, and so for us, it's time to get a new puppy. So I thought Jason, our cinematic director, was going to pick up this uh, award, so I didn't prepare anything. Um, and as a matter of fact, I, I'm doing a talk tomorrow, so I didn't prepare anything for the, anything else. So I hope we're not winning anything anymore. Uh, as otherwise it's going to be really painful. I was walking here and I said, you've got to do something, you've got to do something in case you win something, and I didn't have anything. And then the speeches here have been so good and basically stole my thunder of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, so about stopping war and about stopping the greed, which has been fucking this thing up for so long, so long, ever since I started, ever since. I've been fighting with publishers my entire life, so. It's like, and I keep on seeing. I I keep on seeing the same, same, same mistakes over and over and over, and it's always the quarterly profits. The only thing that matters is the numbers. And then you fire everybody, and then like next year you're going to see, shit, I'm out of developers, and you're going to start hiring people again, and then you do acquisitions, and then you put them in the same loop again, and it's just be broken and broken and broken. You don't have to. You just can make reserves, slow down a little bit, slow down on the greed, be resilient, take care of the people, don't lose the institutional knowledge that's been built up in all of those people that you lose every single time, so that you have to go through the same cycle over and over and over. Right? It's hard to miss the tone in either of these speeches, and that is one of anger and disappointment. When he says, for example, that people keep on asking for expansions or DLC, you can hear his annoyance. But I very much doubt the players and the fans are the source of that annoyance, despite many of us indeed wanting such content. Rather, it's almost certainly directed at the corpos who routinely bring about the ruin and destruction of institutional knowledge that he talks about. Hasbro almost certainly wanted an expansion from Larian because BG3 was immensely popular, and since corpos can only see profit, they of course wanted more of it. So it's likely these greedy corpos that Sven is addressing here when he says, no, we're done with BG3 and Dungeons and & Dragons, and this is reinforced by the fact that he specifically states that the ball is now in the court of Wizards of the Coast, since it's their IP. Another way of saying this is, piss off, we're done working for you and delivering the goodies to you that you don't deserve. Now imagine what terrible human beings you have to be to turn a man's passion for D&D and fantasy into utter disgust and rejection. That's what we can see on display here. Do you remember Sven's Twitter post about Wizards of the Coast being perfectly okay? Well, a lot of people aren't buying it, including other developers. Josh Sawyer, for example, had the following to say, Yeah, I wouldn't work with Hasbro again either. Big oops. Sven, of course, is somewhat obligated to express himself neutrally on the matter of Wizards of the Coast, and even Hasbro. But given his tone, 
obvious discontent with the state of affairs in the industry, and I would argue visible anger. I doubt his Twitter post tells the whole story. Based on all of this, it seems undeniable that Hasbro and higher-ups at Wizards of the Coast were a major, if not the major, contributing factor. There's simply no way around this. Had he given different speeches with a different tone, this would have been far less conclusive. But the reality of the situation tells a different tale. Basically, Sven and Larian have quit Hasbro and everything associated with them, including, unfortunately, D&D. A final point to be made here might be one of combining a savvy business decision on the part of Sven with just desserts for Hasbro, as any future IP Larian works on will be Sven's. Therefore, he will own it and the profits entirely, and thus no longer needing to share them with the corpos at Hasbro. Now, the Hasbro Wizards of the Coast reason converges on the others, and they all feed into each other. Closely linked to Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast is the current set of rules being employed for 5th edition D&D, and Sven had stated on a number of occasions that working with the 5th edition rule set was challenging and ultimately limiting, as he and the team wanted to do things that would have exceeded the limitations of that rule set. As you probably know, Larian enjoys breaking things in an attempt to extract every angle and approach possible to something. And that's simply not an option when it comes to 5th edition. Another way of saying this is that Larian as a studio likes to impose its own limitations on itself rather than having them come from the outside. But the challenge with the 5th edition rule set has only been amplified by the aforementioned matters concerning Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. And thus, I don't think we can view this as the primary driver behind the decision. It's a factor, but not the factor. And of course, the final piece of this puzzle is perhaps the most salient one, because its relevance entirely depends on the status of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. It is absolutely true that historically, specifically in recent history, Larian has not made either major DLCs or expansions, and that such an approach to game development seems to run counter to their design philosophy. Sven's statement about getting a new puppy only supports this. According to him, Larian has plans for the future, not just for one big RPG, but two, one of which is meant to dwarf all other RPGs hitherto. That sounds ambitious, and of course, the sooner they get started on working on this, the better, as they truly desire to work on it with their hearts. As much like BG3 was originally, it will be a passion project. It's obvious based on all the extravagant preparation, the panel from hell, the armor Sven wore, that passion and love for the games they work on is the driving force behind Larian's work incentive. And it's probably true that Larian truly is burnt out on BG3, and more broadly, Dungeons and Dragons. But hold that thought, as I want you to briefly imagine an alternate universe, a universe where both Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast treat their employees fairly, where the corpos there are not corpos, but passionate tabletop gamers who deeply love Dungeons and Dragons and are flexible encouraging, supportive, and can see beyond mere quarterly profits as a motive for the creation of art, and the people that Sven worked with so closely to make BG3 were still there. Imagine that universe, and then imagine the size of a place like Faerun. Faerun, the home of the Forgotten Realms, is vast. Vast in size, but also vast in its many cultures, cities, regional differences in history. Would it then be so strange, in this alternate universe, for Larian to work on, not Baldur's Gate 4, but a different Dungeons & Dragons game set elsewhere in Faerun, such as the unapproachable east, where the Thayan wizards reign, or the far north, where Icewind Dale is located, or perhaps Chalt in the south. There would be many such possibilities in this universe, and I'm quite certain that Larian would be happy to work on such a game, in that universe. But sadly, that's not our universe, and therefore, that game will not be made. You likely get my point by now. Yes, Larian wanted to work on other things, but the horrible management on the part of Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast, coupled by the general trend in the games industry, constantly firing people and going through endless such cycles, absolutely contribute not only to their disinterest in future D&D projects, but indeed aversion, which is a strong word, but I think it's appropriate here. But is there a silver lining to all of this? There certainly is. Larian no longer needs the D&D IP or Baldur's Gate to make huge games that people want to buy and play. They now have the credentials and know-how, and carte blanche to do anything they want, with only technology limiting them. I'm firmly convinced that whatever their next big project is, we will all love it, since they're striving to improve on even BG3, and that is absolutely something to look forward to. Beyond this, as Sven himself has pointed out in several interviews, these mass firings and cycles often lead to the founding of new studios and new IPs. There will be new, talented studios in the future who will try their hand at RPGs, 
They already exist. Rebel Wolves, for example, is a studio composed of veterans who all worked at CD Projekt Red during their golden years, and have now struck out on their own to make their own dark fantasy RPG. The first of a saga, they say. And maybe, just maybe, with a shift in management at both Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast, we might once again see a great RPG set in the D&D universe. Because hey, you never know. Thank you all for watching. If you like my content, you can leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. It'd be much appreciated as it really helps out the channel. And I'll check you out next time. Take care.